this sort of pulls away from that hope and ambition that we're going to get this huge fiscal stimulus. Well, I think there's two things going on. One is going to be the balance between the monetary and the fiscal stimulus. If you get something that's more tilted towards a fiscal stimulus, which may be what you're seeing in the yen, uh, that's likely to lead to more strength. So it's kind of going back to the central banks. Are they out of ammunition? What can they do? They've already thrown kind of the kitchen sink uh, at it to try to get the yen to weaken, and it doesn't seem to be working. So I think there's some of that incertitude. Uh, there's some of that doubt about the ability, ultimately, of the Bank of Japan to get the yen weaker uh, that's leading to the strength now. So if we fall back too much on fiscal stimulus, you could see more strength in the end. It's an interesting conundrum, isn't it? Because, you know, we took, just come out of the G20 where there was a lot of talk about, you know, not austerity anymore. We need to see fiscal stimulus mm -hmm. as a global concept. When you look at Japan, though, because of the role that the currency plays in the safe haven status, that starts to take on a slightly different complexion, does it? Do they have more of an excuse to allow to, to, to keep the BOJ doing the heavy lifting as a result of the need to keep that currency weaker? Well, there's two things that you need. So one is besides hopefully some of the monetary stimulus to help on the yen side, to help the exporters and so on. But we you know, still have to come back to talking about reforms. Uh, Japan really doesn't need more fiscal stimulus. They obviously already have too much debt. They've already spent a whole lot on infrastructure, not for a very positive result, it seems, in the end. Uh, if we don't see, along with any announcements about a fiscal stimulus, more focus on reforms, uh, trying to get the economy moving it again from that point of view I think you're eventually going to see any fiscal stimulus that comes in just fade after a quarter. Um, where are you in, in regards to Japan? I mean post Abe's uh, election victory or strengthening on July the 10th we've got the top X rallying by what nearly eight nine percent so you've seen a significant pricing in terms of the equity story. Um, are you still a buyer of Japan? Uh, I think at this point, probably not so much, because one, I think the recovery that you've seen is, again, what you've had, generally speaking, with risk assets after the Brexit shock, uh, you've had a recovery. People have realized that it's not going to have the big impact. So I think that certainly has helped Japan, because that's certainly one of the more safe haven assets. Hmm. From here, though, without an expectation for significant depreciation of the yen, it's hard to see real rallies in Japanese equities, because there's not going to be much underlying it. Are you a buyer of European equities, then? Because uh, we've got a great story on the Bloomberg this morning. Global mm -hmm. fund managers underweight for the first time in three years on European equities. Does that sound like the kind of uh, sentiment you sympathize with or a trend you want to go against? I think this time you want to be a bit more contrarian. If you look at what are your alternatives, certainly from a developed market equity point of yeah. view, if it's Europe, if it's US, if it's, if it's Japan. So Japan, unless you see the yen weakening, it's hard to be very bullish there. For the US, earnings season not going so badly, but what are you going to get from here going forward? So you come back to Europe, one sentiment's negative. I think at this point that's probably an opportunity. Uh, it's the earnings growth potential that you're betting on. It's just whether or not you're necessarily seeing it. And that's basically what we've got here. This is the EA function, and this is the stock 600, the current season. And this is what you say uh, it, it, it is really is the big bet. If we look at the, the earnings growth, really trounced in telecoms, utility, and financial. So it's a bet on the future. It's a bet on the turnaround. Yeah. No, I think it's much more of a medium-term story. I think the other thing that may finally turn this around, though, is going to be what happens in the U.S. in terms of Fed. Uh, if you finally see and hint that we may not get it this week, that interest rates are going up uh, in September, I think that's going to push the balance back in favor of European equities. Okay. If, on the other hand, they step back, it's going to be more underperformance.